Version or a variation of it several years ago, but obviously I'm older and wiser now, so I should be able to do a better job. Um, it's going to be fairly short. So if you brought your lunch, you probably have plenty of time to finish before it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, most of you, I'm, I'm sure, is anybody not familiar with Geos? I mean, not familiar to use it, but unaware of Geos operating system and graphic operating system for the Commodore. Um, Geos is, I use Geos a lot to do the club newsletter and for other projects, um, printed matter, printed materials. And so there's obviously a use of fonts in Geos. The original program came with seven fonts. Um, not long after that, the company put out a disk of 20 more fonts. And then uh, somebody came up with a font editor so that anybody could create a font. So people started doing that, uploading them to Q-Link, and I started downloading what was available there, and pretty soon I had too many fonts to know what many of them looked like. And uh, when you're ready to publish something, you'd like to you'd say, this font, the names mean nothing for most of them. So I thought, you know, I could make a printout of the fonts I have so that I could look through it and pick out what font looks right for a project I'm working on. So I started doing that, um, put the entire alphabet in each font and all the point sizes of that font. And I came up with something in, somewhere in the neighborhood of 40 to 50 pages. So I thought, well, other people could probably use this. So I put a notice on the discussion boards, Geo's discussion boards on QLink and offered to send it to anybody for some nominal fee, whatever would cover my mailing and printing costs and stuff. And uh, a number of people ordered it, so I sent it off to them. Then, of course, more fonts came along. People started selling their own discs of fonts, and people kept uploading fonts to QLink, and pretty soon I said, I gotta print some more pages. So I came up with another 20 pages or so and offered that as a supplement. And this uh, project, basically, it's uh, one of those things that started out as a very simple, quick little project, and without me realizing it, became an all-consuming monster. So I kept doing this, adding more supplements, and uh, of course, as new customers came along, they could get the entire book at one time. Uh, ended up with 500 pages of fonts, a little more. And as time went on, I uh, made an index the font so you can find the font by name quickly. Um, started putting some information about fonts, stuff that I wrote, stuff that other people wrote in newsletters and stuff at the beginning of it. And each time I sent out a supplement, I would put a little cover letter with some information in it. And pretty soon the supplement turned into a newsletter, which you'll find at the back of the book behind the tab. So anyway, what uh, the bottom line is that I wrote a book 500 pages long, consisting of nothing but the alphabet, and sold it to people. And I would say I had about 40 people bought the entire book over the years, and uh, probably another 100, 150 bought some part of it. And when the time came to end the project, uh, I eventually turned over the rights to continue with it or to distribute it to Bruce Thomas in Edmonton. Uh, he did put it on a CD-ROM with a lot of other Geos products. I don't think he ever added any more fonts to it. But um, I don't use Geos anymore, I don't use the Commodore anymore, so this is the last copy in the world um, that I know of. And I, I do still have the master of it, in case anybody really wanted one. But uh, I'd like to just pass it around and let you take a look at it, and uh, I'll address any questions you might have. here is if you can lift it, you're strong enough for <laughs> sex. <laughs> you started this in 1989, Dick? Yes, yes. And I, I noticed in the beginning there, June of 1989 it started. And the, some of the things that are kind of interesting at, uh, at the time, and Geos only recognized seven fonts. Right. So if you had a disk of eight or nine fonts, you couldn't use the last font. You'd have to move it forward in the lineup to be able to use it. And we also learned over the years that uh, each font has an identification number 
And if you had, and there was nobody keeping track of the identification numbers, it wasn't like you call up a registry and said, what number can I use? People just picked a number and uh, hoped it was okay. So you'll find maybe five fonts with the same ID number. If you have those fonts on your disk, Geos will use the first one. So you'd have to move or delete, you'd have to delete the ones that you didn't want to use. So in here, I put the font ID numbers to help people with that, that aspect of it too. Uh, how many fonts would you get per year to add into the, the book? Well, I, I have no idea. I'm not even sure how many fonts are in there, but there's <laughs> hundreds. And each page probably averages two or three fonts. I, th I think I came up with, uh, I think I ended up about 1,700 fonts. Wow. Which, uh, wow. Which, it's probably more fonts than anyone needs, but uh, people enjoyed creating the fonts. You know, it's an artistic project, it's a graphic project, so people would make uh, all kinds of unusual fonts. And then there were special purpose fonts. You could get a font that printed out barcodes, very nice looking huh. barcodes. How would you collect these fonts? I bought the, the ones that people were selling, I bought their disk. Uh, they were posted on QLink probably hundreds of them eventually on QLink that you can go in and download. And I made three or four of them myself. Oh. And uh, are they uh, listed under your name somehow in the, the book so we could find out which ones you created? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you, might, you might look through all the introductory pages and all the uh, fantastic newsletters at the end and find something out. Okay. I'd have to look to remember myself which ones. Uh, there's one called Fuzzy that I remember that okay. looks like it has a lint on it. So <laughs> oh. Not anything you need, but it's interesting to create it. And uh, I did something else kind of specialized that I can't remember the name of it or what it was, but uh, a couple of them like that. And I had I posted that font on QLink and somebody said, this font could be a lot better. Oh. <laughs> You could be a lot better, too. Oh, wow. I didn't reply. <laughs> I said, well, that's not, you didn't say how. So oh. Take off the lint. Uh, what printer did you use when you were using the uh, Most of the time I had either a, I had a, a Star NX 1020 Rainbow. Uh, I think I did most of it on that. I had an SG-10, I think, before that. Uh, I looked into that, but it was kind of expensive, so I didn't uh, follow up on it. Uh, we, did, we did one thing, we did a flyer for our club through a company that would do a, a laser printed thing from your deal, from your Commodore material. We did a very nice job. Uh, would you uh, collect discs from other people by by mail if they'd send you a disc of fonts? Would that be well, the mail? I would. I don't think anybody ever did that. Oh. But, uh, yeah, I would. And I, uh, I corresponded with some of these people and got to know a couple of people who did fonts and some of the other, graph and other graphics that I collected. And, you know, and I, sometimes I wonder, is that person still out there? Are they doing stuff? Are they doing something with a Commodore? Are they doing something with other things yet? And, uh, kind of lost touch with all of them at this point. Were, were these persons in North America or from Europe? Almost everybody I know is from North America. Uh, did you make contact with the Geos Club in Germany to see if they had any kind of fonts? No, I never had any real contact with any other Geos any other clubs like that. I did subscribe to two or three different Geos magazines. I know I was trying to remember, one was Geo Journal, which yes. was something else, Geo World. Too. Geo World, yeah. Yeah, it was out there for a while. So uh, I, think I wrote an article in one of them about fonts, and something about fonts, too. Any other questions for Dick? Um, this book does list the fonts you created. Mm -hmm. Chili. Chili. That was the first one. Chili. You know why I created that? I created it because I did not could not find an English pound sign anywhere, so I created a font that had that in it, and that's why I just gave the font that name. 
Also, on font names, I mentioned that they usually didn't have a whole lot to do with what the font looked like. There was one guy in the Maryland, Virginia area, all his fonts were named after rivers in that area. Uh -huh. So you have the Raritan, Raritan, something like that. And the river names that, uh, you. For somebody who missed the whole presentation, <laughs> yes. How can I summarize your presentation in one minute? You can read that piece of paper there. <laughs> Is that too difficult? Is that your presentation? No, that's basically that's it. I looked that up. I know it's about. I wasn't planning to do this. You know, I had an emergency. I went to. Yeah, uh, I I wrote a book, 500 pages long, consisting of nothing but the alphabet, and sold it to people. It displays the different look of all the Geos fonts, or many Geos fonts, probably missed a few, but uh, I had about 700 fonts in it, and it shows the entire alphabet of each font at each point size. You'll see the book when it comes around. I wasn't planning to do a presentation, but I had the noticed the book on the shelf, and I wrote this up, it's adapted from stuff I've written before. Um, so it kind of was always just going to set that out there for people to look at. So you can really get uh, the details of what I said there. And you can also read page after page of blah, blah, blah that I wrote back in the day. <laughs> and stuff that other people wrote. Dick, I don't know any, anything about Geo's font creation. So how do you go about it? Is there a program in Geo's that you just load up and and make, the, start making the, the font? The font editor that I used was created by Jim Collette, which is oh, a name that probably Jim. is familiar to anybody that was really active in Geos. Um, very clever young man. He started doing this programming about age 12 or 13, I think. And uh, you just, it was kind of like working with GeoPaint, oh. pixel by pixel design, or whatever. And you had a, a format a frame to work within, make your F. Put the, that's where you wanted it, save it, so on and so forth. So you would have to do all 26 each letters? Each letter is designed individually, yeah. Because uh -huh. you can do an O and turn it into a D pretty easily and stuff like that. And, and then you had to do the punctuation marks also? Punctuation marks, anything you wanted to add it into, yeah. But it, it gives you, you know, a little tiny font, you're working with a pretty big field, with some big, big pixels, and, uh, you can see where you go. And you can see, I think it, would show you your font at the side, you know, what it would look like and be able to, in normal size so you could see how it was developing. Uh, uh, are there limitations to the Geo's font editor that you use? Like, uh, uh, you can't go bigger than this or you can't go too tiny or? Well, you, you would develop a font and then you say, assign these point sizes. And I can't oh, remember if I point had to create size. each point size separately or not. Huh. But it would, if, I think it was laid out, so you said, this is the size, it'll be a 12 point font, and this will be a 16, and so forth. Also, I mentioned that uh, Geos had a seven, you could only see seven fonts, but somebody created a utility that allowed Geos to see more than seven fonts. And I don't remember whether there was a limitation on that number, too, but you could scroll through all the fonts on your disk and use any of them with that utility in, in play. So, there's, you know, there was hundreds of utilities created for Geos, and, uh, and several of them were very, very useful to me. And, and you created these fonts because you didn't find any fonts to your liking, or you needed, you, you, there was a need for it certain fonts? It was a fonts. form of artistic expression, <laughs> except for the shilling, because I wanted to put, I wanted to say something in shilling, so I couldn't tell the font that did it. Artistic expression. So uh, you mentioned Bruce's CD. What part of the book is on his CD? Sorry, what? You, mean, you mentioned Bruce. Bruce, Bruce Thomas. Bruce Thomas. Bruce Thomas CDs. Yeah. Which? What part of the book is on that it, CD? It's not in it because I, he was given the rights after everything was completed. But I think I have. It. I think I have. Um, no, I don't have it here. Um, you know how to get in touch with Bruce Thomas? I haven't heard from him. Yes, I have his. E e I have his email address. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I have uh, that. You, you can look. Somewhere too. All you have to do to, well, he also has his web page there, even though the club hasn't been going for years. He has his web page, the, the Commodore users of Edmonton Q, C U E. So he, he writes about the club there, but the club hasn't been around for, for years and years and years. But you can contact him through that uh, web page also. 
Okay, I think we need to have a door prize and a raffle drawing. Oh, a door prize. We've got so many prizes to give away. Okay. Well, thank you, Dick. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.